Good morning, Pilot teachers and students, and good morning, class. Good morning, Mr. Sarah. All right, thank you. You may sit down. All right, our topic of discussion today will be also on pressure, and this time we'll be looking at atmospheric pressure. All right, what is atmospheric pressure? Isaac, can you give us your explanation of atmospheric pressure? Okay. It is a sea of air above us. Okay, we can simply explain the sea of air around us. Okay, any other explanation? Marvin? No idea. Ume? It is a pressure at a point in the atmosphere. Okay, it is a pressure that is being exceeded by the atmosphere, right? Simply whenever a body is placed on this uh, surface of the earth, all right, we will find that the weight of the atmosphere seems to fall on that body or object. So that is known as the atmospheric pressure. Now looking at the atmosphere, our atmosphere is simply a layer of gases which has to extend high above us. Okay, it may be hundreds of kilometers above the uh, surface of the Earth. Now looking at these layers, what are the three layers of the atmosphere? Right, from your great and science, uh, failing. So the three layers of the atmosphere, the uh, troposphere, you have the ionosphere, which is after the troposphere, and then you have, okay, stratosphere. Now the troposphere will have to come first, and then you have the stratosphere and ionosphere, which is the one that is at the end of the other two. Now, in this lesson, we'll be basically going through and then looking at the atmosphere and uh, what are some of the ways in which we can measure or how we can measure this atmospheric pressure. And after that, for those pilot teachers who are and our students, I'll be demonstrating you the effects of this atmospheric pressure. And also we'll be going through looking at how the atmospheric pressure is uh, measured. So what I'll be asking you to do now is to quickly go through. I have a few notes for you. You can copy these notes and then after that there will be activities. Okay, that is a definition. Quickly go through and then copy the uh, definition of the atmosphere or atmospheric pressure.
All right, finished. All right, this is just an explanation. I will write from the first one. All right, we live at the bottom of the deep ocean of air, which is called the atmosphere. All right, it may look very dense, but it exerts a high pressure. It's almost about 60,000 uh, billion tons. But you'll find that this pressure is not able to cross us, okay? All right. Um, okay, now go through. I will explain this and then I will show you some of the, okay, one of the instruments that is used to measure uh, the atmospheric pressure, all right? One of these is the mercury barometer which you can use to measure. Right, there are many instruments which can be used to, one of these is the mercury uh, field uh, barometer, and then you have the others which are the uh, manometer, which you can use, that is a YouTube manometer, and the other one is the aneroid uh, barometer. This one does not use any liquid, that is why it is called the uh, aneroid. But then you can use mercury, or you can use oil, or it can be uh, water as well. But the water one has its uh, disadvantages, right? It may be quite long for you to use water, or sometimes it may freeze at a uh, cold temperature, and also for the, or it may boil in hot temperature. That is where water is not uh, often used, but you can use this uh, mercury. All right, quickly go through have this information. can pass this one around and then have a look at this instrument. Okay, finished. Okay, um, in this one, the average atmospheric pressure is almost 660 millimeters of mercury, right? It does not matter if the barometer is uh, tilted. If it tilted, it will still give you the same height. Okay, the vertical height of the mercury stays the same.
this is the one when we go to suppose what I can say. What I can say is when it's in the mood. This midterm and the works are not good, whatever I can say. Let's just go through. No, it's okay, I'll try. All right, this is how it, um, this is something like a container or bowl of water and then you have uh, not water but mercury. So in here, uh, this mercury is placed and then you have a tube which is in here. Okay, that one is vacuum or empty space but you have some um, vapor of mercury which are still in here but we can simply say that air is remote, there's nothing in here. So what happens is that when atmospheric pressure pushes on this, uh, down on this mercury, it rises to a height of, okay, 760 millimeters. All right, you can go through quickly, just get the diagram down, and I will explain to you how uh, the pressure is taken. Okay, just give us, get a sketch of this diagram, I'll give you. Now to our <coughs> finished. All right, looking at this one, okay, the mercury will rise to a height of about 760 millimeters. If we have to change that to meters, it will be 0 0.76 meters. And the pressure is given by density times acceleration due to gravity times the height. So you have the density of mercury which is uh, 13,600 and then you have this T which is 10 times 0 0.76 and it is almost about this. Okay, this one should be 1.013. Okay, okay 1.013 times 10 to the 5 pascals. Okay, that is how. So the 
pressure at sea level would be almost about one times okay, 1.1 or 1.013 times 10 to the 5 Pascal that is the pressure at sea level. So looking at this, you can relate to this one, right? One atmosphere is almost equal to about, okay, one atmosphere is almost equal to about 1.1, uh, 013 times 10 to the 5 pascals, or you can say one atmosphere is almost equal to 760 millimeters of mercury, or you can simply say 760 millimeters of mercury equals to 1.013 times 10 to the 5 pascals. All right, quickly go through this. Have your own sound, and then I'll give you your activity questions. Quickly for those slow ones, quickly go through. Finished. Okay, I'll demonstrate to you how the atmospheric pressure works. Right, I have some liquid in here. All right, what's if, in case my our experiment might go wrong? Okay, uh, the, you see the cup is filled to the brim, and then you have a cardboard or something like that that is placed over here. So, okay, we just turn this one upside down and then see what happens. Okay. Looking at that, you can explain how atmospheric pressure uh, works. Okay, this one shows you that uh, because the pressure inside here is quite small, that is the reason why the atmospheric pressure, which is almost about that at sea level, is able to push this cardboard over to hold the water in here, right? It stayed there for some time and then it fall out, okay, because of the movement of the uh, particles. So that is how it happens. Right, for the next one, probably I might, uh, somebody, you come up, you try to. All right, two of you. Okay, we have two uh, muscular people in class, so they will try to move this one apart. Okay, come. You hold it and then you try to push this one and then try to remove it. Okay, just place some water in between those and then you try only a few. Okay. All right, this one is not glue, it is water. So, okay, just pull it straight across. That's it, okay. All right, what did you, what did you feel from that? You find it difficult too? Okay, it's quite hard to remove, okay. 
you have your explanation for that. All right, thank you. Guys, you may sit down. All right, these are the questions. Uh, pilot teachers, you can also go through and ask your students to quickly copy these questions and then do them. Finish. I will not give you the second question. There are four questions. Question number one, what did you, or why would you find it difficult to breathe, especially at uh, high altitudes? That's question number one. Number two is uh, cabins of uh, passenger aircraft are being pressurized. What does this mean? And okay, the third question. Right, the third question is you find in, in an experiment, right, a can of water was boiled. And then after that, the lid was closed, and the can is cooled by running water over it. Right, this cross the can. Explain why this happened. Okay, just give an explanation of why that happened. Okay. 
Kimberly. Uh, who is Kimberly? You. So you do question one, two, and question three. Okay. Question one, two, and three. Okay, I'll give you the time. Okay, I'll tell you when to. So yes, so you one, maybe two, and um, Johnny. Third question, this one. As soon as you enter, you pass it down. As soon as you answer the question, pass it to him and then push it. Okay, to our final question, that is on calculation. All right, here is a question. So, pilot students, please take note of this question. Uh, question number four is to calculate the height of the uh, water field barometer if the uh, pressure is uh, one times uh, 1.013 times 10 to the 5. Okay, it should be 013. Let's see who's going to do the question. Um, Mark? The last question, this one. Zero one three. One point zero one three. We'll wait for you finish your questions and then I'm going to ask those three students to stand and then you go out for your working up. So what is the density of the liquid? You know the density of the liquid? Uh, density of water. Okay, there is one, but if it is in kilogram, it will be 1,000 kilogram per meter cube, uh, cubic meter. So that is the water. All right, for the last question, you should have remembered the density of water. If it is in kilogram per meter cube, it will be. What is it? <laughs> Let me see. This one pressure over um, 1,000 times yeah, because 1,000 kilogram per meter cube is the density of water. Times 
understand. No, then it should be done there. PG. All right, we will now go through the corrections to those questions. Uh, pilot teachers, uh, you may ask or you may have your students to observe or you will, as we go through these um, corrections to the questions, there are four questions. Question one, two, and three are basically um, explanation questions and the fourth question is on calculation. So I will uh, now ask the first person to come up, uh, probably stand where you are and then uh, answer your question and then you can sit down. So the first question will be uh, Kimberly, and then after that will be Mary, and last will be Jolin, okay? And the final question will be done by Mark. All right, you can. Um, because pressure is lower at high, le high, high altitudes, and the air is much thinner. Okay. Why would you find it very difficult to, okay, breathe, especially at higher altitudes? Uh, the reason is that the air becomes less or thinner, meaning that pressure decreases as you go higher. So that is the reason why you cannot uh, breathe, especially at high altitudes. Okay, very good. So going on to question number two for Mary. that cabin on passenger aircrafts are built or pressured to have the same pressure in the cabin as the pressure outside. At high altitude, there is less air pressure. Okay. Uh, in a similar version, you have the uh, uh, cabin, so aircrafts which are being pressurized because as you go higher, the pressure will decrease. So in order to make something, especially pressurize the cabin so that you are uh, breathing normally, especially when you are inside these aircrafts. So only for the reason that when you go higher, pressure will decrease because the air becomes thinner as you go higher. Okay, uh, to the third question. can was heated, the pressure inside was high and the pressure outside was low. But when the can was cooled, the pressure inside became low because the particles inside the can did not move about at high speeds as when the can was heated. The can was crushed because the pressure inside was lower than the pressure outside. All right. Good. So those are the answers. Uh, let me go back and then explain that last question or third question again. All right, looking at this, the can was simply crushed because uh, according to the law, as the pressure increases, what will happen? Uh, the temperature increases, what will happen to the pressure? Uh, it increases as well. So this time, you are reducing that pressure, uh, the temperature by having cold water over it. So that means pressure will have to decrease. And that is the reason why the high atmospheric pressure was able to cross the can. All right, so okay, we will now move on to the last question.
in order to find the height, I change, I make the H the subject, which is height, height equals pressure on gravity. Uh, Sorry, pressure on gravity C. So H, which is equals to height um, 1.013 times 10 to the power of 5, and change it to meters, I multiply by 1,000 times 10. I came up with 101,300 on 10,000, and the height is 10.13 meters. Okay, so very good. If you have to come up with this answer, that is quite correct. Now, the disadvantage of this one, water field barometer, is that because it is uh, this long, 10 meters, you cannot measure pressure, especially in a building or somewhere, because it is quite hard to carry. That is one advantage, uh, disadvantage. And then you will find that it is also, or it may also freeze in uh, cold temperatures, and also it will boil in. Uh, hot temperatures, so that is where we cannot use uh, mercury, uh, rather water. Okay, quickly to uh, summarize what we went through, right, you'll find that the atmospheric pressure extends high above us. As you go higher, the atmospheric pressure will be, or it will decrease. Many of the things that we see today, uh, especially on this experiment, especially the experiments that we just went through, um, uses atmospheric pressure because when you remove air inside, that means there is less air pressure in. So the high atmospheric pressure is able to hold the uh, glass together. And also, when you were looking at the crossing can, right, because temperatures and pressures are almost proportional. When you cool that, you are decreasing the pressure and therefore high atmospheric pressure is able to cross the can. And you can be able to see how uh, atmospheric pressure is, okay, in other words, you can mention 600, rather 760 millimeters, which is almost equal to one atmosphere, or that one atmosphere can be equal to 1.013 times 10 to the 5 pascals. Right, so with that, our keyword for today will be Good afternoon, pilot teachers and students. Good afternoon, class. Good afternoon, All right, thank you. You may take your seat.